Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the final trailer for Morbius! With Jared Leto playing the living vampire, proving all it takes to slim down from House of Gucci to House of Hunka Hunka is a diet of blood! A film set in Sony's adjunct Spider-Verse, even more confusing this side of Spider-Man No Way Home, so I'm gonna break down all the new footage in this final trailer to try to explain how it all connects. Or how Sony wants us to think it all connects. Let's go! The trailer opens with shots from Morbius's transformation that we saw in the boat sequence released back in December. In the comics, Dr. Michael Morbius is a Spider-Man villain with a rare blood disorder that he tries to fix with vampire bat serum and electrotherapy that turns him into a living vampire, not the immortal undead variety from vampire lore. This boat scene seems based on Morbius's introduction in The Amazing Spider-Man 101 in 1971 when he was found at sea and attacked sailors on a boat and then, horrified by his actions, jumped overboard trying to commit suicide. But here, Morbius's attacks seems a bit more justified. This looks like it's after Morbius's experiments with bats in South America and continued treatments from his fiance, Dr. Martine Bancroft, on their way home with those shady contractors that he might have partnered with to make this trip. Contractors that I think might have been hired out by Horizon Labs or maybe even Oscorp. But unlike the full version of this scene that we saw a couple months back, this trailer makes it look like the soldiers are looking for and hunting Morbius when in reality they are fleeing from him. Fall back! Fall back! <laughs> A shot has actually been added to this trailer showing a flashlight pointing up at the bulkhead. And for a moment, it looks like the light might pass over directly where Morbius could be. There is some dark shape with some notes of purple in there. It reminds me of my favorite shot from the 2005 horror film, The Descent, when one of those cave divers points her flashlight at the cave wall over what we think was just a boulder, but when the light goes back over that spot a couple seconds later, the boulder has crawled out of sight and no one says anything. And among all this carnage, there's a very quick shot of Morbius's Fangs rushing toward us! But if you slow it down, you can actually see he is upside down swinging at us. And his fangs really just glimmer in that light. Moving on. Michael, what have you done? I was trying to help people. But the cure. It's a curse. Michael. So Dr. Morbius treats a patient named Anna, who presumably has a similar condition that he has. Notice that glowing blue medical tech that he uses matches the glow of the equipment that he uses on himself, signaling that Morbius isn't just selfishly seeking to cure himself, he is an anti-hero with nobler motives. She has a drawing on her wall showing a sun, perhaps a nod to Horizon Labs, which has the logo of a sun rising over a horizon. Morbius cages himself at the mouth of a South American cave, cutting his hands and attracting bats with a kind of sonar frequency that looks like it's emitted from this cage, somewhat evoking who in the cage in Jaws, and I guess through some kind of wacky science, he's gonna end up with vampiric powers. His helicopter has a tag of N9747P, which is actually a common stock registration number seen on aircraft in a lot of movies like Cars 2, Casino Royale, Miami Vice. You know, when we're looking at the MCU as a whole, Patrick Stewart may still have a bright future of playing multiverse versions of Professor X ahead of him, but that doesn't mean you necessarily want to copy his hairstyle. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35, but with Keeps, you can get quality expert care without ever visiting a doctor's office or a pharmacy. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there, but at half the cost of your local pharmacy. Though you never have to go to a doctor's office, Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. Easily subscribe to Keeps and get refill reminders so you'll never run low on the products you need to take care of your hair. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash new rockstars or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash new rockstars. Now Morbius calls it a curse and the audio sounds like it might have actually been a response to Adrian Toomes' line later in this trailer. You've been given a gift. Not exactly. It's a curse. Which would reflect the gift versus curse motif from the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man. This is my gift. My curse. And then recently repeated by Green Goblin in No Way Home when he said, These are not curses, they're gifts. Moving on, Spider Man! I have powers that can only be described as superhuman. 
but there's a cost. As the title reminds us, this is the same studio that gave us Spider-Man No Way Home and Venom. We cut to another shot of Horizon Labs. Horizon Labs is a facility where Peter Parker works in more recent comics, developing new suits like a stealth suit, the Spider Armor Mark II, and the Spider Armor Mark III, which we should note both showed up as alternate designs in the Stark Tech Fabricator on Tony's jet in Spider-Man Far From Home, designs that are probably still in the archives of that same machine now in Happy's condo in No Way Home. Horizon is presumably the lab where Morbius conducts his research in this movie, and or the shady partners who might want his serum to weaponize for their own ends. Oscorp also exists in this film based on the shot of the building in the past trailer. It is the same tower and logo as Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man films. So the implication is that Morbius exists in Sony's Spider-Verse alongside Venom, thus why he referenced Venom in the last trailer. I am and this could be in the same universe where Andrew Garfield is Peter Parker's Spider-Man. That would explain why the first teaser showed that graffiti calling Spider-Man a murderer, and in No Way Home, that same Peter confessed that he stopped pulling his punches and got rageful. Now, yes, that particular art was the Raimi era suit, but this is also like fan art in the world, not a photographic representation of exactly what Spider-Man has to look like in this reality. Now, how does the MCU Michael Keaton vulture fit into that? Uh, hold that thought. Morbius rubs his forearm if you look closely, there's some dark veins on his bicep that shift around under his skin. Yuck. Then Morbius activates his sonar perception as a bus passes him in New York's Chelsea area. Its motion explodes in a watercolor swirls, as if from his perspective, everything is part of a fluid network that he can hijack and float through, just like the visuals we saw of him floating in front of that subway car. Now, we do know from set photos that there is a city bus in this movie with a Daily Bugle, where is Spider-Man ad? But this is a different bus. Just got an I Heart New York on the side of it. Different bus. Us. Moving on. Now, I face a choice to hunt and consume blood or die. You all have monsters within us. It's up to us to control it. What if I can't? Okay, here, Morbius' sonar explodes across the whole city as he runs along a building ledge with a purple cape trailing behind him, like his purple cape in the comics. Then a terrified nurse runs to her hospital, gets attacked by a vampiric claw. Though this isn't necessarily Morbius, it could be Matt Smith's character, thought initially to be based on Loxie's crown from the comics. The character's name is actually Milo, and he might also be based partly on Emil Nikos, Michael Morbius' childhood friend and his first victim. Meanwhile, Jared Harris is playing Morbius' mentor and a caregiver to both these boys when they were younger. His name is Dr. Nicholas. On to the next clip. Michael Morbius. You've been given a gift. Not exactly. Time to let go of what you used to be. Discover who you're meant to be. Okay, Michael Keaton appears once more as Adrian Toomes, Vulture, who of course last appeared in Spider-Man Homecoming, which is in the MCU, when he was also wearing this same white inmate jumpsuit in that Homecoming post credit scene. Now again, the MCU is a distinctly separate universe than the universe of Morbius and Venom, so the simplest explanation is that maybe Michael Keaton is just the Adrian Toomes in every reality, much like how J.K. Simmons is the J. Jonah Jameson in every reality. Folks, it is either that, or all of these universes are secretly set after some past multiversal reality war that resulted in our current inexplicable anomalies, redundancies, and plot holes. And we just been gaslit so we don't remember what happened. And now Multiverse of Madness will fix everything in a few months. I mean, I don't know why Marvel Studios would care to justify Sony's illogical casting decision, but hey, it just sounds like they're counting on us, not thinking that hard about the logic, which is always worth great for the nerd movie genre. But here, it looks like Morbius and Tombs will share a prison cell, a cell that Morbius is gonna break out of, which probably will allow Tombs to break out as well. Morbius gets slammed into a neon sign for Wyman Hotel, which could be a reference to MC Wyman, longtime artist from Marvel Comics. Notice how Morbius knocks off the M and the O. Maybe he'll bump into a few other signs, knocking loose an R, a B, an I, a U, and an S. Spelling Smurbio. Moving on. All our lives we've lived with death. Why shouldn't they know what it feels like for a change? Just accept who you are. The bad guy. 
Young Morbius and Young Milo, the older version of which will be played by Matt Smith, sit beside each other in hospital beds. They are boys with the same blood disorder. That's how they met. And it sounds like the mutual torment they faced as kids make them now parallel figures. With Milo having gone through this first, the person who gave Morbius the idea to do it. Now, but instead, Milo has turned against humanity. And notice how he stands on the same subway platform where Agent Rodriguez later finds some bodies of cops. I'm guessing it was Milo who actually killed them. In another shot, he cheekily points a nail or a tiny stake at someone. Maybe this was actually a stake projectile fired out of that arm-mounted apparatus of Agent Simon Stroud, Tyrese Gibson's character, a weapon that might be designed to deal with supernatural threats, but ineffective against science vampires like Milo. Then Morbius gets blown back on this rooftop with solar panels, and whereas his forward movement has always been tailed with these purple wisps, now he's pushed back in a fluid stream with hints of teal. That might be the color associated with Milo's vampiric form. And in these swarms of bats, you can actually see two figures, probably Morbius, fighting Milo, bursting out of that barrier over the heads of the authorities. On to the final clip. Holy water? Really? Yeah. You ever see Lost Boys? Story of my life. So Rodriguez places holy water in front of a detained Morbius. Holy water, of course, being a known deterrent against vampires according to vampire lore, which Rodriguez references by citing The Lost Boys, a 1987 teen vampire movie. Jared Leto responds, story of my life. Jared Leto did appear in teen horrors like urban legend. But notice how Stroud has this scar across his neck. There was a shot in the previous trailer where Stroud was holding his neck as if Morbius might have just grazed it. Or maybe Milo did. Actually, the tag of the UK trailer is different. You don't look anything like you do on the news. Yeah, you look downright robust. Pilates helps. How can they tell how fit he is when he's wearing a hoodie? Like a hoodie is what I wear when I go to pool parties. So when it comes to this movie's connectivity with Sony Spider-Verse, I think the overwhelming response to Andrew Garfield and Spider-Man No Way Home has reaffirmed Sony's hopes of preserving their own Spider-Verse independent from the MCU, populated with characters like Venom and Morbius, and soon Kraven the Hunter, Madam Web, Chameleon. So Michael Keaton as Adrian Toomes was an MCU character, but since Sony was the majority financier of Spider-Man Homecoming, Keaton's contract was with Sony, not with Disney. Maybe now we're seeing this studio creatively reclaiming the character by suggesting all vultures in every reality just look like Michael Keaton. Now, I doubt we will see Andrew Garfield cameo in this movie, but it wouldn't be that hard for this movie to reference his existence with like a Daily Bugle headline for photo credit to Peter Parker or like a news ticker. And folks, the craziest thing is, if something that simple were to happen in Morbius, that might be enough for fans to forgive anything else they don't like about it. To tell their friends that it is essential viewing for every Spider-Man fan. So yeah, it's it's easy to say Sony might not know their audience as well as Marvel Studios does, but maybe they know us better than we think. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.